I'll be there, yeah, 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 now you've got a friend. We asked uh, Jeannie, a family friend, um, who, like most of you in this room, never had Ma Bell as a teacher, but had Ma Bell the mom, like all of us have. And, of course, and then, of course, this also would not be complete if a complete tribute, if not for uh, one of the girls to say something. And there's a lot of arguing over who would, but I'm told Julie is going to do it, because Alicia said absolutely not. So um, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask Jeannie and Julie to come up. And um, I, I think it was um, Jeff told me that Jeannie's sister was telling a story about her speech. And we might have to take a break in the middle because she might have to leave the room to use the bathroom. I don't know. So <laughs> I just I just do what I'm told. So uh, with that, let's welcome Jeannie and Julia. <laughs> mess and address, you know? Okay. So my name is Jeannie, that's what uh, the Bell family calls me, um, and I grew up at 8341 Tennyson Street, which meant that Jackie Bell was my neighbor. Um, from early childhood, Jackie was a role model for me. She was a person who always had a smile on her face. She was always in a good mood. She treated everyone around her with kindness and she always made me feel extra special. Growing up, the Ording and Bell girls were inseparable. We did everything together, including sleepovers, um, going to the movies, roller skating, birthday parties at Shakey's and Oregon Rectum, <laughs> And another special thing was attending the pantomime performances put on by Jackie students, or you guys call them the lip syncing. <laughs> It was at these performances that I realized how special Jackie's students, how much they loved her. Um, and they all lovingly referred to her as Ma Bell. I remember that, Rock and Robin, tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> when I was in just grade school, Ma Bell promised me that when I grew up and got married, that she would be there to sing at my wedding. And instead of being a good little girl and saying, oh, Jackie, how wonderful that would be, I responded to Jackie by saying, are you kidding me? You will be dead by the time I <laughs> Well, Jackie kept her promise, as always, and she sang beautifully at my wedding. That was almost 20 years ago. Like family, we don't question whether or not we'll be there for each other. We just are. We are there at the times that matter most. I remember the happy times, like visiting Jackie's granddaughters, Megan and Shannon, when they were born in the hospital. And I remember the sad times, like when my sister Barb and I were with Jackie and her girls when Dave, her loving husband, passed away. You see, we may have started out as neighbors or even friends, but our families have discovered a bond and a link where our hearts are, are one, like family. No matter where we go, and I'm an international flight attendant, or what we do, we are never without each other's loyalty, <coughs> support, and love. I, without question, am one of the blessed ones, because I do not just have one amazing mother, I have two. Jackie, I love you. Thank you for helping me become the person I am today.
and the support that we have um, from her. And I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for appreciating her and what we do and how much we uh, love her. Thank you. I do think it is important that uh, we do uh, acknowledge uh, Julie, Alicia, Suzanne, John, Jeff, and of course the memory of uh, David E. Uh, for letting us have a little part of your mom and uh, being who she was to all of us. Just thank you guys so much for everything and uh, thank you for welcoming us into your family. And I really, we, we all really appreciate that. So thank you. And uh, you like to say a few words for us. Or <laughs> <laughs> Unaccustomed as I am to speaking. <laughs> and I suppose you're wondering why I called you all together today. <laughs> so maybe I said, were you surprised? Um, I, I would hope that you knew I was surprised. I truly didn't think I would be able to walk into the room. Um, it takes a lot to surprise me. And my children and friends are in trouble, but that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's for another day. Um, how wonderful hearing the stories um, that I heard and what memories that brings back um, to me of some of the things that I had forgotten. I never forgot about the lip syncs. Because man, oh man, I tell you, it, and that was after after the kids had to do a 20 minute presentation with visual aids, that was a fun exam in speech class. So that was asking a lot of young people at that time that were part of their senior um, project. And then I thought, we've got to have something fun after all of this intensity. And that was when I came up with the idea of lip syncs. And let me tell you, there were some stars born that day. <laughs> um, probably the one I remember most, and I don't remember what class, I shouldn't say remember the most, but one of the most vivid was, um, if any of you remember Lou Dixon, who was now the Adams County Sheriff, um, and he was a nine and he, oh, the Lord, love a duck. <laughs> and he wanted to do something very different, and he is a big man, I mean, physically a big man at sweetheart. And he came out from behind the curtain, and he came out and did the song, The Bitch Is Back, <laughs> and had on a black curly wig, and dressed with huge chichis, <laughs> and the nylons, and the heels, and I'll tell you, it took us 10 minutes just to quit laughing. <laughs> and then he did his number, that was one of the highlights, and the, the rock and rock, I mean, we can go through the, the list of songs that these kids did, and as Jason said, um, the fact that those were close moments to Christ for me because, like he said, that some of those kids had the courage to do what they did in spite of, and make themselves look foolish because the day we quit laughing at ourselves, then maybe that's a day when we're just too full of it. Um, and we need to be reminded of that. Um, sometimes when I canter and, um, not so much with my choir because they're magnificent, but like when I canter, if something goes awry big time, and it's like God is saying, Jackie, don't you get the big head? And he keeps me humble, believe me, in more ways than one. But I didn't realize it would take something like this to trigger all the magnificent memories of my clear red days. We used to call it queer puddle back in those days. <laughs> um, and I, I remember the time when um, one of the new kitchen ladies put um, some uncooked rice down the drain and ran water. And maybe some of you Clear Lake Cougars remember that. And um, the rice expanded, of course. And I went, we came into school that the next day and nothing was working. The drinking fountain, I um, mean, all of it. And it had gone out into Clear Lake. Somehow that fish got into the system. And so I went in to use the restroom that day. And I was getting ready to, to do my thing. And I looked, and here are these goldfish swimming around <laughs> in the toilet room. <laughs> I said, you think I'm going to let some fish nibble on my fish? you got another thing coming. And then some of the teachers found me in their desks. Um, I, Bill, I don't know if you remember those, that, that time at Clear Lake or not. But anyway, those were, and that, for some reason, that memory, it, then there was the other time somebody put some cherry bombs in the boys' bathroom. 
and my room was right across in room 334, across from, I was the keeper of the girls' and the boys' bathroom. And Mr. Goodberry, at that time, insisted we'd be out in the halls um, on duty, so I was. All of a sudden, there's this boom, boom, and there's porcelain flying at me. I went back. I did ask for um, pay that day, extra pay. And then there was a the time when some kids decided they wanted to vandalize the building. Um, and so they wrote, Mr. Ross was the you know, discipline at that time. So they wrote on the, the clear like the set and made like an E. First wing, second wing, and then third wing, I was in third wing. And on that wall they had written, Mr. Ross is a whore. <laughs> H-O-R-E. <laughs> so my kids, because I'm a lame arts teacher, so that day all my students got a lecture. You know, if you're going to use some terminology, <laughs> you better know how to spell it. <laughs> and you better be sure you got the right gender. <laughs> Because there's no way Mr. Ross could be a whore. <laughs> a blackhead maybe yes, but not a whore. Um, and so the memories, as I was sitting there, they just came. Then the other, another one that was priceless for me, and I never really told very many people. I, I promised I would keep my mouth shut. But I was over in the 110 for a while in the first wing. And one day after school, it was a beautiful spring day, like today, and this car comes by tooting its horn. And I look out my window, and there are three tushes hanging out the window. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, okay. And like Cindy said, the kids share a lot of things. Well, some of the kids came in and told me immediately who it was. And so I thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, what are you going to do with that information, Jack? And I'm like, nah, I'm not going to alert main office. What, you know. So the next day, one of the gentlemen came into my room, and I said, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen such a nice looking tush. <laughs> and this kid looked at me and he said, what are you talking about? And I said, I don't know if you remember Ken Jesse, but um, I said, Ken, I said, that was a good trick you pulled yesterday. He said, what are you talking about Mrs. B? I said, I recognized the tush. And he went, what? <laughs> he said, I said, oh, Ms. Bell, are you going to tell on us? Are you going to tell on us? I said, no. But if I ever see something like that sort again, yeah, then I will. Everybody gets one warning. And this is yours, son. But he became my friend for a while, because he, he was kind of ordinary in the classroom sometimes. And every once in a while, he'd kind of forget what our agreement was, but I would remind him. <laughs> Remember driving past the first wing, Ken? <laughs> but, um, so this has been a wonderful, wonderful day of this. Um, this is my 16th year of subbing at Westing. Um, or in the district, I should say. Um, you know, high school is wonderful. It's four floors, the stairs, like this. So um, I, the elevator broke down here a couple days ago, and so I had to walk those four flights of stairs. Let me tell you, that is a walk and a half. And I'm breathing heavy. Like, <gasps> and, but then I didn't feel so badly, because I looked at the younger kids who were 15 and 16 coming up, and by the time they got to that top of the stairs, they were <gasps> I don't do it. I don't. But I, I do walk the stairs um, down because I don't have buns of steel by the end of the year. So, uh, anyway, the, the memories, and I guess that's why I stick with substitute teaching as well, because as Pat said, it is my passion. It continues to be my passion. I also take the moral responsibility that when God gives you talents, you have a moral obligation to use those talents. Um, and if you aren't using those talents, shame on you. Um, because I truly, firmly, firmly believe that, and that's why I continue to do what I do. Um, and I told my kids, if you see cynicism creeping in, that's time you say, Mom, probably time to quit, quit teaching because, but I, I truly believe that won't happen because um, the passion is there. And when you're a substitute teacher, it's a different world. And it's a different world even in period with our societal issues and lots of the other things. And there's days, you know, and think, okay, am I doing the right thing? Am I helping these kids at all? Or doing some of the things that I do by example? Because that's one of the reasons I think I'm there for younger teachers as well, who now um, always call and request me to be their substitute teachers because they know they don't have to worry um, when I'm in the room for them. And I, I take that as a tremendous, tremendous responsibility. And the kids know that, and I've never talked about it. But, um, but when you have a kid 
it's clear down in the other area of the thing, screaming my name. This is Bill. This is Bill. Who are you today? And I tell them, and I just, oh. <laughs> and then there are those kids who will come in, and I'll notice their absentee list. They're absent, absent, absent. And all of a sudden, they're showing up at my class, and it's like, you're usually not here. What are you doing here? <laughs> oh, Miss B, they told me you were here today. I said, are you coming in to work? And he said, no, I'm just here because you're here. <laughs> Go figure. Um, but those are the kind of, and I was, and I do share with kids, like I, um, I did with you kids as well, and honesty has always been my policy that I take very, very seriously. And sometimes we get into class discussions that are pretty heavy, and I have no problem sharing about growing up in an alcoholic environment um, and the consequences of doing that. And I, But the, the point I want to make with the kids when I share that is you can rise above any and every obstacle if you make that choice. Um, it's out there for you, and you can make a choice. And I said, I am here to tell you that it can be done. And I remember the day, I remember the event, and I was in 10th grade, that I said, alcohol is not going to be a part of my life. And I shared that with the kids. And one day, um, we got back on target to work, and this one little girl stood up and she said, Mrs. Bell, you have made my day today. Those are the reasons you hang in there and the reasons that you do what you truly think God wants of you, because I take that very, very seriously. And most of all, I thank God for friends like you, um, my family, friends that I consider family, a lot of my choir people that are here, and friends that are just friends that we <clears throat> gamble with. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Um, but you know, it's the old expression with the good times roll, and they have been rolling for me for a long, long time. Um, God willing, they will continue to roll for a long, long time. I move a little slower, um, and I am blind in my left eye, but that's okay. I still see pretty darn good with my right eye. And um, I, I don't really think about the things that have occurred in my lifetime because somehow they've become, I've had cancer surgery, um, I've had some, some severe breaks, that kind of thing, but I truly never ever think about those because I'm here to laugh and give a and cry and shed a few tears because of people like you in my life. And I can never ever thank you enough for that. Um, may God bless each and every one of you, and most importantly, keep you under his divine care and make you happy, happy people. And join with me as I continue to be happy. Thank you. Kids 
was like, it was incredible. Um, the Chinese fire drills on the way up to the ice cream park. <laughs> <laughs> the camping trips up to uh, El Dorado Canyon, which is now closed. But I was sitting there thinking, back in the day when mom had made the decision to leave her, like she had affected as many lives as she could there, and made the move to high school, Julie and I were just getting ready to enter high school. And she sat us down and she says, I'm going to teach in high school. I want to stay in the district. And she gave us the choice of whether she could go to, she wanted to go to Westview, where we would be attending eventually, or she should go to Ram. Julie and I really didn't care. Mom, maybe a small issue, um, having the two of us girls going at the same time with her as a teacher. So she did make the choice to go to Ram. And from the people in the from the people in this room and the, the posts that I've seen on Facebook with you know Stacy and Vivo and, and everybody involved in planning this whole thing, I have to say as a family member, as her daughter, I think she made the right choice. Oh. <laughs> I would look at family pictures and I would see all of her girlfriends on this beach and, and just having a great time and then I looked over and I, I said, who's this? She said, it's you. <laughs> so I would always ask her, can I go, can I go, can I go? And she always took me. And we've always had fun no matter what we have done. And one of the happiest days that I remember is we went and had a picnic up in Nuevo, Michigan at a Tobago. Um, but we had aunts and uncles and mom and dad and Anthony's and Aunt Helen who were two incredible women There was such an impact on the two of us. And I think the love that we were shown by our mom and dad and those two women who were very successful women when women weren't successful and they broke all the barriers that were out there. And their faith in God, their faith in their family, they would give up personal relationships in order to take care of their mother and dads. And I think Jack and I have, it's just been such a phenomenal example. I think we've always lived our lives for that. Because like she said, our home life wasn't that. It was wonderful. We knew we were loved. Maybe our mother and dad weren't happy, but us kids always knew that we were loved. And, um, but we could have more fun, and, and I think our aunts knew that we were all spoiled, individually and, and together. And uh, I forgot where the heck one was. Anyway, so we're up and we're in the snow, and so we're, we're just all together. And we were having picnics on, on the tailgates, and this was an um, old-fashioned toboggan run. And we go down those hills, and we were, <laughs> she screamed all the way down the, down the hill and all she could say is like, be that, be that, be that. <laughs> and we had, you know, and my dad was a big burly man and he was beside himself. Our mother, who didn't always smile, but she had a, a, a fun, she was just, everybody was just in stitches. So, and, and our brother was there too. But so the worst part was when we got to the bottom of the hill before my dad knew what was going on, in front of everybody, Howard looks at the toboggan and he said, Who peed their pants on the toboggan? <laughs> <laughs> All these things go. So anyway, that's just some of the, the, the fondest memories, and she's always been there for me. And um, I, I treasure every moment that we have together. You know that. And your family is a testament of who and what you are. My children adore you, and I think the hardest thing has been has been the separation, because they don't, they know you, but they don't know, haven't had a chance to know you for fun, like all of us. But but we'll get there. We're going to get there. So um, anyway, thank you for all coming, and believe me, she's the real deal. She walks the walk. She talks the talk, and um, yeah. 
And she said, how did you get here? I said, I flew. And I said, I didn't even need a plane. <laughs> talking about it for a while, especially at Easter. <laughs> in our family, the Bell family and the Thompson family, there's a tradition that we've done for 45 years now. We spend Christmas Day together at Easter and we have our kielbasa. We always have to have our Polish kielbasa. And it's a tradition that we've carried on for today. Because it's very special to us and to my daughter and to my grandfather. And I can have this teacher. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. No doubt, but my kids have. But when she walked, when they walked in and seen Jackie as their sub, they said, "Oh, that's yeah, really good. But that's my aunt Jackie." <laughs> <laughs> they would all, what, what was it? Oh no, we got to behave in this class. Yeah. But um, I appreciate everything you've done for me. Especially for the last six years. And I also. And to thank Alicia, Jeff, John, Julie, and Aaron for sharing their mom with me. And you know, and Joshua. Some days we don't know what we do without you. Yeah. And, and also our Thursday night dinners that we have. Yeah, the cult. We yeah, have, we have this Thursday night dinner where we go to these churches in Westminster. There's four churches. And Thursday nights here and I go. I'm the youngest one there. But we but I go because you know it's our time together. But um, I just want to say I love you. And you know that. I love you. Appreciate your It's so good to be invited to be part of this celebration of Jackie's life. What she is all and how she's touched us in so many different ways. I was uh, involved in uh, first confessions today, so I feel like I've been washed clean from those little kids. <laughs> and uh, gee, before I end with a prayer, I'm sorry I couldn't be here in the beginning for the prayer. And uh, my first getting to know uh, Jackie and her husband Dave was when I first was assigned to Holy Trinity in 1973. In July I arrived. I was 30 years old, and that's 40 years ago now, that we crossed and made our paths known. And the way I got to know Jackie was through Dave by winning, uh, they, they won half of a lottery, and I can't remember, Irish Irish the Irish sweepstakes, and they gave half of it to the parish. And Pat, and um, all of Julie's Bell family, oh my goodness, wow, I just love you all. <laughs> and Frank for being Mr. Camera Guy and inspiration too because he kept me cheering everybody here. So, um, and all the speakers, fantastic, and my friends and my people that I met for church a long time ago. I know you. Oh my goodness, it's overwhelming in school. Just collided. Um, and my beautiful family, Corey Kelly over here on the. And my Sapphire. son, my yeah, my daughter Sapphire, my son Kyle, and my husband Scott. Yay. And I'm crying because I, my son Corey, my son Christopher is in guitar, so anyway, <laughs> he's so far away. I'll work the room. I'll be there again, yeah, again. You've got a friend.